Hey guys, what is going on? This is your Raw Review starring me, Geek, and I hope you're all doing well. I uh, don't know where I'm wearing these glasses for, but um, I thought of a bit of a change of character. Um, actually, before I start the review, there's a bit of an update news I want to give um, where I'll be in these next couple of days. Um, so basically, if you comment on this video and I don't comment straight back, um, I, I, I won't be able to, I won't be on YouTube for a couple of days because... Um, tomorrow I'll actually be going to London, um, it's a school trip, and I'll be staying over there till Friday, and straight after Friday I'll go to a house party, yeah, I haven't been to one of those before, but I'm going to go to one, <laughs> so it'll be real fun, um, but yeah, that, that's where I'll be, where I'll be, so, um, you know, when I see the comment, I'll, I'll you know, I'll reply straight back, I'll, 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 I will, um, reply ASAP. So we start off this week's Raw with CM Punk once again, because he started off, he opened last week's show as well. Um, he comes down the ring, um, he questions the audience actually on how he was in the, um, how he was on the title from last week and these hidden footages of uh, Paul Heyman, his master plan with the Shield and Brad Maddox. Um, you know, he was, you know, he, he wasn't in that, which he wasn't, um, you know, he was questioning the audience about that. And he also mentioned about how he is still the champion and, Rock isn't, even though he is holding on to that WWE Championship, um, as, as now. Um, you then have Booker T who interferes CM Punk and announces that he'll either be facing Rey Mysterio, Jericho, or Randy Orton, you know, his past WrestleMania, um, opponents. And we, the WWE Universe, have the say in this, but I know full well that this is just bullshit, and that we don't have the say in it. <laughs> so... You know, I didn't really care. Um, in my opinion, I thought this segment went a little bit too long. I know it was the opener and all, but I just... I felt it was a little bit too long. It, it just... It just a bit stale as well. I mean, you have Booker T messing up his lines as well, you know. I mean, think little things like that, it kind of messes up the segment. It makes the segment stale. You know, I'm not saying Booker T's bad or not, but he did mess up his lines, and it makes that segment stale, in my opinion. But after that, we come to... Our first match of the night, and this was a repeat match. Ryback versus Antonio Cesaro. You know, this just screamed and shouted it. This just screamed and shouted it, that this was a repeat match. We've seen this three times, I believe. We've seen it twice on main event, and once last week on Raw or SmackDown. It was one of the two main shows. And uh, you know how I feel about these repeat matches when you keep seeing them over and over and over again over just a short amount of time. You know, you, 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 know, you lose interest. It doesn't matter if you don't if you, if you love the guys, you know. I'm a big I'm a, quite a big fan of Antonio Cesaro as of late, and Ryback I actually quite like him. Um, you know, I'm not one of these Ryback haters who chants Goldberg, Goldberg, Goldberg. You know, I try and get behind that talent. Um, you know, he's a new talent. I like that, and I just don't get out why we keep getting these repeat matches. I mean, WWE have a very very large wide range of a of a roster. Which they could, um, which they could showcase on this raw in this segment, you know, take take some other guys, you know, some guys we don't really see much on TV, and put them in this spotlight, build them up, so they, you know, they become the future of the WWE. I I just don't understand what it's, it's something easy they can do, but they just don't do it. You know, have they got a lack of trust in their roster because if they have, they've got to find some more talent, I think. But anyway, you have Ryback who goes over in this match. Um, I don't see why, I, I just, there, there was no, there was no development in this, you know, there was no storyline involvement in this, there was no Miz in there with the Antonio Cesaro feud, uh, I'm not sure if they're still going on with that now, because they didn't showcase that feud in this Raw, um, they didn't really showcase, well, they did showcase Ryback's feud with the Shield later on, but this was just a match, and that was it. After that, now, I should not talk about this, and it was about the filler we got in this show. I felt we get we kept getting it. We really did keep getting this filler, and I, I it was it was, it made me it, it was just so boring. It was really really boring, and I'm sitting there as a fan of wrestling of WWE, and, I, and when I watch these filler, I just don't care. You, you get you get loads and loads of filler. You you get actually you get so many mentions about this WWE app. You know I don't care. I really don't care. You know, I understand WWE are trying to appeal to a, a, a wide range of people. You know, with these these te new technology now. You know, they've got they've got to um you know, stay competitive in that um in that market. I understand that, but they don't have to mention it. I don't 
matter how many times they mentioned it, they mentioned it every minute. It felt like that anyway. It, they just kept mentioning it. You know, there are some people out there who don't have these smartphones. And there's a lot of people out there who are, who are older generation fans. Um, maybe they don't have the technology for it. Maybe they have just a phone like me. Wait there. Maybe they just have a phone like me. Okay, this isn't, you know, this isn't one of those um, iPhones or whatever. I don't go on this to go on the WWE app. I, I use my phone to call people. That's just what how I use mine. You know, but they just kept mentioning it. And when they kept mentioning it, it makes you feel you're not a part of it. It makes you feel you're not a part of it because you don't have the WWE app. And it just pissed me off. And they just kept mentioning it. And I couldn't give a damn. I couldn't give a damn. I would rather watch it on my TV. I'm just saying. But I do understand that they're trying to, you know, they're trying to go on different platforms. I understand that, you know, that is how today's society is with all this te new technology. I understand that. I really, really do. But they just, they just could have said it once or twice. You know, twice, three times. It would have satisfied a little bit better for me. You know, it's it just, it, they just kept repeating it and it just pissed me off. So after that, we come to another match, Santino versus Jack Swagger, the returning Jack Swagger. Um, I guess it was okay for Swagger to be on the show, you know, I was quite happy they actually showcased him on the show. And, um, yeah, Booker T who joins commentary. <laughs> um, and, uh, y y this match wasn't exactly great. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of either of these guys, you know, I don't like Santino. Not really fond of Jack Swagger, you know, what happened in the past and all. But um, Jack Swagger goes over in this match, which is the correct result, by the way. And um, there's something I want to mention here. Um, Jelly King Lawler said this. I want to quote him here. He goes, this is the different swagger. Different swagger. Um, no. Um, he just won a match. But he's no, to me, he's no different uh, Jack Swagger. Just because he's had his hair cut or whatnot. Or a different, different hairstyle. You know... If you wanted him to be a different Jack Swagger, why not give him a new gimmick? Why not give him a new theme song? There you go. You can repackage the guy. Make him a bit more, you know, relevant to the WWE product. Make him a bit more, you know, you, you look at the guy and you think, that's, that's something new. They, they could have done something interesting with the, this character. But no, he's just come back as that all-American who no one gives a shit about. And we're just going to see him on our TV screens and no one's give a damn. After that, we have... Del Rio versus Cody Rhodes, in which was a pointless filler match. Del Rio goes over. You know, that's what was going to happen. I know I'm a Cody Rhodes fan, but Del Rio goes over. He gives us a speech. And then you have Big Show, who appears on the Titron, and uh, wants a rematch at Elimination Chamber. And right now, I'm sitting there thinking, no, 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 not go down this route, because I've seen it. I've seen it many times now. And I don't want to see it again. I keep seeing this match, and I don't care. I just don't care. Yes, they had some good chemistry, but when you're going to show me it all the time, I don't care. So we move on. We then go to Mysterio versus Daniel Bryan, and this sparked up something on my head, and I thought this this was a, this should be a pay per view match. I felt this. I don't understand why they gave this on free TV. I really don't. I think Off The Rope Show actually mentioned about this. And I agree with them. I agree with them. If you've not subscribed to them already, go subscribe to them. They're one of the best on YouTube, definitely. Um, in my opinion. And I just don't understand this. This is a pay-per-view worthy match and they just showcase it on free TV. But nonetheless, nonetheless, um, Brian, uh, Brian and Mysterio did a really, really good match here. I was really interested and in, he's kept me entertained. Um, you have Daniel Bryan who actually wins with the no lock. And you then get a, a, a return, a surprise return. And this is no other than Mark Henry. Mark Henry is back. And I'm very happy about that. Um, the, the Hall of Pain is back. Um, who, who, his music hits and I'm marking out. Um, he comes down. He beats up on... Uh, Daniel Bryan beats up Rey Mysterio. You have Sin Cara who comes down, tries to jump on White Mark Henry. I don't know what the hell he's thinking he is, but uh, Mark Henry picks him up with these. 
and delivers the world's strongest slam on him. And Mark Henry is back, guys. I am very happy. I'm very interested what they're doing with him. Maybe he'll be main eventing, um, maybe, maybe maybe WrestleMania. Not main eventing, but going into that World Heavyweight Championship, um, in the, not World Heavyweight Championship scene, sorry, was what I was meant to say, not the main event scene. Because you know he's going to be main eventing, don't we? I'm not going to even, I'm not even mention it. But Mark Henry, maybe maybe against um, someone like a Ryback? Maybe. Um, I guess it would be quite a good match. But I'm really interested in what they'll be doing with Mark Henry. I'm really, really glad he's back. But after that, we have Sheamus versus Kane. Sheamus goes over in this match due to Daniel Bryan because he comes in, um, provides a distraction. So Sheamus gets the bro kick on Kane. So this is teasing this breakup between Daniel Bryan and Kane, and this is what it needs now. They should have done it at Royal Rumble. I said that before, but hopefully they're doing it now. So they're having a match at, um, at WrestleMania. They're probably going to Elimination Chamber, Daniel Bryan and Kane, in that Elimination Chamber match. You probably have one of them screw screw each other, one of probably screw each both both each other, and um, they'll, they'll both screw each other, and um, it will set us up for Kane versus Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 29. I think that'd be a quite good match. Um, you know the story behind it. You could tell a good story. You do really good. But um, after that, we come to Miz TV, and by far this was the worst Miz TV I've ever seen in my life. And it featured Paul Heyman, a guy who I like. This was utter boring. It really was. It was boring. I tuned out. I tuned out in this. I'm not. Th I'm not sure what happened here. I really ain't. But they, yeah, you have them talk. But then something happens, which sparks my interest, and that is Brock Lesnar. Yes, Brock Lesnar comes in, and um. Provides, he, he, he gets crazy, he, um, he gets Miz, he, well, Miz actually, you have face off between Miz and Brock Lesnar, and Miz actually goes first and pushes Brock Lesnar, so it's showing some, um, showing some, like, um, like a heroic side to the Miz, and, uh, Brock, uh, Brock Lesnar then throws him out the ring, he breaks, uh, well, just tries to destroy, destroys the set of Miz TV, thank God, uh, Miz, Miz comes back in, F5 to Miz, Brock Lesnar standing tall in this segment, so, in my opinion, this segment started horribly, well, it started okay, and then it just, the main body of it just sucked, I don't really know what happened, Brock Lesnar coming in saved the segment for me, um, after that we have, we have Randy Orton versus Wade Barrett, there is a reason why I put my head in shame there, because we've seen this matchup before. We saw this last week. The exact same match. With the exact same results. And I don't care. I really don't care. You know. <sighs> it pissed me off. It pissed me off. I've seen this before. <sighs> and you know how I feel about Randy Orton. Right. I'm going to tell you straight, I don't like Randy Orton, I, I really do not like him. He's one of those people you see on TV, and you, and you just, just, don't, just don't like them. You know, and, th and there's reasons for it. Oh boy, there's reasons for why I hate Randy Orton. I really do not like the guy, as a wrestler, or as a person. And... Wade Barry is someone who I really like, and I enjoy watching, and I'm quite behind. But I've seen the match before, and you're just burying Wade Barrett, the Intercontinental Champion. Why not give us Wade Barrett and a Bo Dallas promo or something? Give us a segment with them. It'd be a bit more interesting than Randy Orton, in my opinion. Randy Orton is not relevant. He really isn't. What did Randy Orton get out from this? He got bugger all. He got bugger all in this. Why not showcase Bo Dallas in this? Yes, we saw him in an interview segment. Why are Randy Orton was coming down on, I believe it was Wade Barrett, actually? Because they can't, they can't, they can't let you put an interview segment near with uh, Randy Orton, will they? Uh, I don't understand why they couldn't do this. Something easy they could have done. Something they could have done good for business. But no, we'll just show you where Randy Orton going over Wade Barrett, because we've never seen that before, have we? 
you come to something a bit more better on our TV screens, and that was CM Punk versus Chris Jericho. Uh, I know that we, the fans, had to decide this one, but you know, uh, <laughs> um, this was a really good match. It really was. Um, it was an entertaining match. I watched it all. Um, you know, we've seen this at WrestleMania 28. We've seen this at Extreme Rules. Obviously not as good as those matches, but, you know, still entertaining match. And, um, I was interested in this match. I guess you could, you know, you could argue that you didn't really want to see this because you've seen this at WrestleMania. You know, it was a WWE, that WWE Championship. I understand that. But, you know, that was a year ago now. And... I, I, I really do understand that. I really do. But, I mean, you, you could argue both sides here. I mean, I, I'm stuck in the middle, to be honest. I could argue why it's a bad thing and why it's a good thing. But, you know, it entertained me on this show. And I needed entertaining on this show. Because from the other crap I got, there was a lot of crap on the show beforehand. And I lost interest in this Raw. I really, really did. Didn't like this Raw, really. But, um... No, this was a really entertaining match. You have Punk who goes over, which is a game, which is the right decision. Um, Punk wins, and um, I mean the, he is going on to main event elimination chamber with the Rock, so they are going to build CM Punk strong. But this was a really good match, and I enjoyed it. So you know. <laughs> anyway, we come to something which I never expected, and this was the next. Hall of Fame inductee. Ladies and gentlemen. Bruno San Martino has been inducted into the Hall of Fame, guys. Wow. Wow. This is something I didn't expect. This is something I never thought I'd, be, I'd see, actually. I never expected this, and it's happened. The longest reigning WWE champion, WWF champion of all time has been inducted into the Hall of Fame. This is arguably the biggest inductee ever. Forget about Hulk Hogan. <laughs> you know, bro. But Bruno San Martino has been inducted into the Hall of Fame. This is something I never expected, never thought I'd never be seen in the near future. We've finally seen it. Wow. I can't wait to see this. I could not wait for the Hall of Class Semer Hall of Class 2013 ceremony. I really can't. You're gonna have you're gonna have Mick Foley. You're gonna have Trish Stratus. You're gonna have Mr. Bob Backlund, and you're also now gonna have Bruno San Martino. What a Hall of Fame class! And I give WWE credit for this. I really do. They may give me crap on TV, but this is something great. This is something spectacular. Something I will remember in a very long time. Then come to a backstage segment with... We kept getting these actually with Big Show. Um, I didn't care again. But anyway, this this segment you have Del Rio who's there. Um, starts beating up on Big Show. Big Show, yeah, they basically have a brawl. And Del Rio stands tall. So where's the heel heat? There was none. I don't care. Move on. So we then come to Brad Maddox, and um, yeah, we come to Brad Maddox. He had a he had a part of this show which we was really happy about, um, and he was in the main event spotlight, which is good. And I give credit for WWE for doing that. Um, he comes down. He's glad the news is out. He's glad that the Shield and Paul Heyman have been found out, and that he has been found out as well. Um, you then have to. He, he actually calls the shield out because apparently it was meant to be John Cena, but there. Anyway, we um, we have the shield who come down, and um, basically they attack Brad Maddox. You then get John Cena's music hits. You then get Ryback's music. You then get Sheamus, and then you get the WWE locker room coming out, and um, a brawl starts only with Ryback, Sheamus, and Cena with the brawl with the shield. Sorry, they have a brawl with the shield. Um, the WWE locker room is just like, we'll just stand back with this one. But this ultimately sets up the, that there'll be a, a six-man tag match and that'll feature Ryback, Sheamus and John Cena versus The Shield. Now, there is one possible outcome for this which needs to happen. And that is The Shield go over. That is really what needs to happen at Elimination Chamber. The Shield needs to win this match. It will do, it will do no good 
for the other three men. John Cena is going to be main eventing the show anyway. Sheamus, you could you could argue that he could have a bit of a spotlight in this, but you know he doesn't need to win. All right, he doesn't need to win. You go to Ryback again, someone who they need to bring up strong, which they've been doing as of late. Yes, I guess the night it win would be nice, but the Shield need to win this one, and Ryback. You, you can believe in the guy anyway, really, because of how they've been building up with other wrestlers and his past. You know, him getting screwed in those matches. And if they are to do this redemption storyline, you know, it's the revenge where Ryback will, you know, go well over on the Shield. It needs to happen at a bigger pay-per-view, um, pay or a bigger, you know, a better a better place and a better time for it. Because right now, Elimination Chamber, the Shield needs to go over. They are precious in the WWE right now. They cannot damage it whatsoever. So the shield needs to go over in this one. But, you know, overall this segment wasn't too bad. I was happy Brad Maddox got some time in this. Really happy they showcased him in this. Maybe he'll have some interaction in their um, six-man tag match at Elimination Jebber. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe this is a, a, a face turn for Brad Maddox. Maybe he's a new underdog. This new hero heroic underdog. I don't know, but it'll be interesting what they do with Brad Maddox and the Shield. But that has been your Raw review overall. This Raw, to me, it sucked actually. It sucked. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't enjoy it that much. I mean, I I really didn't. The only good parts of this was Mark Henry's return, Bruno Sammartino in the Hall of Fame. God, man. I couldn't believe it, and Chris Jericho versus CM Punk. Um, they were really any good highlights for me, which I picked out from this show. The other sucked. I've already told you about my thoughts about the filler and the crap they gave me about this um, this WWE app, which I don't care about. But yeah, that has been my raw review. The show wasn't that good, to be honest. In my opinion, that has been your raw review. So I hope you enjoyed, guys. And until next time. See ya.